let's go. of emotions, excitement, nerves, it's that feeling of you going away and my home is, is on that bike, my wardrobe, I'll be leaving with a massive smile on my face, I can't believe it's here, <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's, yeah, to, and to be, you know, to know that you're going to be 22, seeing the world, like, the world, and being away for a year, that's just, my story is that I won't be the last, that people will follow my footsteps and get out there and do something. Down to the Ace Calf, have a bit of brokey, and then send off, get a nice little wave off, a police escort, and then down to France, down to the tunnel. Um, May left Ace from London, crossed Europe and then into Central Asia. Now the first leg I was with Globusters to get into China because the only cost effective way is to go with a group. So I went with them and then went off by myself through Australia and then into New Zealand and then on to America and then south all the way down to the bottom of South America into Ushuaia and into the Montevideo Uruguay. Now that's where I started the capital city record and then from there onwards, I continued to Canoni Capital Cities. So I did that in South Africa, and then back into Europe, where I just basically ticked off every capital city in Europe, and then back into the UK, doing the capital cities, and then finished back in London, the 17th of July. 6th of May, here in Croatia on the border, video diary number one. <laughs>
so I'm on the coastline of Croatia heading down and down south to, to the southern bit of Croatia it's a nice, nice little piece there it's the ocean, it's quite spectacular so far it's all going amazingly well, I had a fantastic send off from the Ace Cafe police escort, great fun uh, thank you for everyone who turned up that sort of trip gone past France, Germany, gone past all those places, you know, which, which, which everyone travels to. And now this is starting to get really, you know, just gone, come out of Slovenia, to Croatia, I mean, couldn't have asked for a better day. Uh, Benz, coastline to the right, sun shining, I mean, on two wheels, this is, <laughs> this is paradise. <laughs> Tomorrow, heading towards Albania, well, I'm still in Croatia, but then I'm in Albania, in Greece, and then you get to Turkey, and then you start heading to Central Asia. So this is where it really starts happening, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. It's, it's a great laugh. The bike is going as smooth as anything. Um, just installing a Scott oiler on there, that's fantastic. Yeah, I've already clocked up over 5,000 miles on this trip so far, and another 59,000 to go. I think I've ticked off four countries now, there's uh, 69 countries to go, so that's a whole year of um, a whole year of seeing the world and uh, I couldn't have asked for anything more, it's just being here, it could be, <laughs> it's, yeah. After leaving the beautiful Croatian coast, I headed further east into Albania, this time with Thai companions Bowie and Banana who was riding back home to Thailand. We did get a little bit lost in Albania, but it didn't stop us meeting some local kids and then heading further east into Greece and soon into Turkey. Just around Turkey, uh, well halfway through, just in customs, getting checked out, so let's see what happens. We all finally got through Turkey with ease. However, riding through Istanbul was a different story. It absolutely poured it down. And not to mention the crazy traffic, the trucks and cars. I had to ride and battle all my way through, riding down the hard shoulder. It was my first taste of non-Western traffic. This was definitely the start of Central Asia. Uh, it is the 11th of May um, here in Istanbul, Turkey. Day 8, I think. I've got a day off riding. I uh, really ploughed through Europe. Cause of course, I'm going through Europe next year, you know, taking off all the capital cities so, and get to the start of Asia because this first bit is really about Asia. <laughs> you know, the centre bit of Asia, the China, and all that, into Thailand. Um, so, um, here in Istanbul, they say it's the, the you know, the, the city which um, separates east from west. Um, it's a crazy city. <laughs> it, it's really, you know, on the bike, beep, 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 you know, on the horn, and uh, yeah, it, it was crazy coming in, but great fun. Um, it was a good tester, good tester for China. Let's say that um, Albania is very, very different. Even though it's in Europe, it's like this little pot, this little point, you know, this little area in Europe which ain't Europe. It's um, very different. It had everything. Um, going through Montenegro, trying to get getting lost at the signs, trying to find this ferry, and then and then went into Albania. And, yeah, and Albania just changes like that. Dogs in the road, donkeys, just shoot potholes, road conditions are horrible, you know, it's, you know, it, it was, <laughs> it was a laugh, it really, it pushed me, it really did, I mean, a week in Turkey, and then um, up to Georgia, and into Central Asia, I mean, this is where it really starts, so I'm really looking forward to it. then left Istanbul, riding further east. The roads got smaller, the towns got isolated, 
and the mountains go green. We're headed south towards Cappadocia and then east near the Syrian border. did get a chance to climb the famous Mount Nemrut with panoramic views and spectacular weather. It was breathtaking. Headed further east, there was a lot more police checkpoints, passport checks, license checks and more. But it was all part of the fun. From Mount Nemrut, we then headed north through Kars and then into Georgia. Georgia, country, another country off the list, and all successful. Once in Georgia, we had a quick stop in Tbilisi and then further east into the wild Azerbaijan. We shot across Azerbaijan to the capital of Baku, where we would catch our freighter across the Caspian Sea. Azerbaijan was very, very different. It truly opened my eyes to how east we're really going. Lots of police checkpoints and animals on the road. We finally got into crazy traffic into the capital of Baku, where I started to realize further east you go, the crazier the traffic gets. A night in Baku, Azerbaijan, to take in the culture, and then tomorrow across to the Caspian Sea. Well, we're here in Baku, Azerbaijan. I'm up to cruise to Turkmenistan.
Woo! Yeah, crack on, take me to stand. Country number 14. Long way to go. <laughs> As we got to the port, they started loading the trains in the boat. We had to just wait. You go, sir. Passports. Go ship. Go ship. Thank you. Turkmenistan, here we can. As we got on the ship, it was by far anything but a five star cruise. Passport, passport, there you go. On a fantastic five star cruise, Azerbaijan, leaving Azerbaijan, going across the Caspian Sea to Turkmenistan. Now, we're on pretty much a boat like that. It's rusty, it's old, and then they sit there, waste of time for a good four hours. <laughs> it's just bollocks. Uh, but it's brilliant. Well, get on the boat really quickly. You get on the boat, and uh, is the boat leaving? No. The boat's been stationary for an hour, two hours. So a total of six hours, four hours waiting, around two hours waiting actually on the boat. Um, and as you can see, something to pass the time. <laughs> but, all part of the adventure. So Turkmenistan, here we come. Cheers. Little did I know, we were only going to leave another several hours later in the dark. But we kept ourselves preoccupied, playing cards, and having a couple of drinks with the crew. Yes. So See yes. you tomorrow, later tomorrow. Yes? Yeah. 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 I speak a little English, good English. So here we are, day two on the fantastic five star cruise. We're in the middle of nowhere. Don't get lost, this is a nice little compass here. Safety boats are somewhat safe. Where the crew is, I don't know. Wander around the uh, top deck. So. Sleeping or drinking vodka or something. <laughs> but uh, yes, so here we are. Here we are at the end of the Caspian Sea crossing. Total of two days on the boat. Majority of the time was just anchored. Turkmenistan. It's getting dark. It's uh, we arrived. It's local time is 8:30 in the evening. We've got to still wait to get all taken off since nine o'clock. Get through customs. Apparently, customs through Turkmenistan isn't the greatest. They're not the most efficient of people. It's going to be a good four minimum four hours at least getting through customs and getting the bike through. It's uh, probably won't. This hotel just down the road staying at. So uh, probably won't get in until minimum earliest midnight. My timings of leaving the border was a little bit off. Has come 4:30 in the morning, and we're still waiting to leave the border. Turkmenistan border coming up to 4.30 I'm just talking very quietly in case anyone sees me filming it's a long, it's been a long night a long night um, probably the one of the hardest borders so far it really is hard. they've um, started collecting an amount of pills there was a group of backpackers Apparently they had some pills, you know, some codeine in it, and they, they didn't like it. They've kept that whole group behind, and so we've caught up. So of course they're now looking into, you know, a 
asking us all for their first aid kits. It's all, uh, so they've now just taken a couple of the guys from the group in, taking some of their pills, because of course, you know, one has something for arthritis, one has back problems. So we will see. Uh, we will see what happens. Um, but 4.30, it's going to be later than what I expected. Sleeping on the table, it is. Uh, for now, I'm going to cut out just in case I get caught. See you later. The border process took another four grueling hours, with one of the other riders not being released the following day. But we all eventually got released to Turkmenistan. I then got to see the wacky capital city of Ashgabat, which is made of white marble and gold everywhere. It was something out of Hollywood and Disneyland. Going through sand, you need momentum, and that's something I didn't do. I ended up losing the front and getting my right leg stuck under the bike in the desert. Thanks to a Glowbuster crew and a local from the gas station, they helped me get through. Also having sturdy city crossfire boots helps me walk away unscathed.
My toy. Good, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Here I am making some new things like water. Ooh. Under our bike for a bit of shelter. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 10th of June, Yenning in China. I'm here, I'm here in China. The feeling is beyond anything I can ever imagine. China was one of the top thing, top countries on my list and I'm here. I've ridden from London through Europe, through Turkey, through the stands, and I'm here in London, uh, in, in China. It seven thousand miles, just just under seven thousand miles. You know, I I got here. Yeah, you know, it's hard to comprehend a little bit. You know, it's, it takes a while to sink in. But I mean, you know, I didn't I didn't fly here. I didn't get crammed on on a Kentucky bus, sixty other people. You know, I rode here. And that's the best feeling ever, the best welcoming ever through all the shit we've had through the stands. I've got here, um, and you arrived in customs taking photos, customs doing everything. You know they they want to take photos, they want to they want to interact with you. They're happy to see you. It's it's amazing. It really is. The youngest person to ride here, the first British Triumph bike to arrive here into China. Uh, all on a bike. It's unbelievable. Five weeks through China. Bring it on. I'm excited. I really am. Here we have a Chinese driving license lesson. Off to get our Chinese driver's license. <laughs> Peugeot, Peugeot. There it is, look, there it is, isn't there? Yeah. Eat it. Oh. I'm a triumph trying to get me out of Come on, come on. Oh. Hey, very good, very good. <laughs> Three English. 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 Yeah, English. Good to meet you. Let's go. Yes, good to meet you. Good 
baixo, baixo, baixo. Baixo, baixo. No motorcycles. On the expressway in China. I'm sure they'll let us try and find. Expressway, here we come. Three to five. Three to five. Oh, oh, <laughs> Minutes. Really? Yeah. How far? Yeah, yeah. Okay, after that we'll come back to the same town. Yeah. Oh, to, to that uh, I'm here at the top of the sand dunes in Don Huang. Amazing views. Sand dunes, camel riding. go Bob. Good job. After leaving Dan Huang I was so surprised at the different contrast in the scenery from desert to then green top rocky mountains. I even came across a little gem like this which was built into the rocks. Just arrived, just coming across some of these beautiful roads and come across a beautiful Tibetan house. Absolutely amazing, it's beautiful. I mean, they've got these beautiful prayer flags, absolutely stunning. Headed further in the mountains and further east and the scenery just kept changing from green to rocks to then being able to see beautiful snow peaked mountains. It was epic. I then caught up with some local Chinese adventurers heading east just like I was, with their wives on the back and all their luggage on the bikes. I couldn't help but say hi, check out each other's bikes. Ni hao! Hello! Ni hao! Ni hao! Ni hao! 
One of the riders was a bit ill, telling me he had a real bad sore throat. So I gave him a pack of strep sores to try to help him out. Here we are at one of the great forts. At the end of the Great War, near the end, north of China on the Silk Road. Now this is the inside of the wall. Um, they have two layers, so the outer layer and then an inner layer. The inside bit, obviously this is probably where they say where all the soldiers were. Because I mean, the Silk Road was destroyed, absolutely destroyed. Yeah, just bombarded by all enemies from the east, uh, west, from the west. visited the fort and now this bit here is the Great Wall of China. It's unbelievable I mean seeing the sights over there um, as it comes down the mountain the forts you got the beacon up there um, so that warned you know the people in the villages and that any enemies coming um, this is it Great Wall The amazing thing is uh, west is over there. So as you can see, they, you know, soldiers, thousands of years, you know, stood there looking upon, looking upon the, the flat plains there of the west, and um, you can see any enemies coming. Perfect. Just hurry. You guys would have been fit. Came that way from my, on my way back. <laughs> London's over that way. Brilliant. Right behind me, as you can see, an absolute huge temple. Uh, it's the Great Buddha Temple in Guto. It's the uh, town full of coal. And this town, I mean, this town is full of coal. Um, and it's just everything's black. Crazy drivers, crazy. Drivers. Biggest Buddha in the world, which we're just about to see, but this is the first temple. But let's go check out the Buddha, and it's right on the edge of this cliff, so it's right inside. It's really fascinating. Each one has different Buddhas. Holy oh. shit! Let's show you the Buddha. That's some big Buddha. After leaving the Big Buddha, the final ride across the Silk Road to Yijiang was something I've never experienced in my life. Traffic everywhere! Oh. <laughs> this is crazy! It's mad, I mean beyond madness you know I'm doing things which I would never even think of doing back at home here we go here we go here we go to rock and roll the traffic in Yijing I've used my horn more now than than I 
ever will in my whole life. You know, you have to drive like the locals, you have to be mad, you have to be crazy, you have to watch yourself, um, and you know, you have to drive just a little bit more crazy on a bike because you have to get out of the way. You've got to be looking, you've got to be alert. If you bring road rage, you will die. Um, angry, you get stressed. If you get stressed, you make mistakes. And um, here, you just have to go with the flow. You have to take a breath and accept it for what it is. <laughs> In China, you can do what the hell you want. Person on the road, fantastic. you got to accept it as it is. And and you got a spot. <laughs> this is the city before the city. Shang man is crazy. <laughs> it's great fun once you accept it. It really is. It's brilliant. I mean, like I said, you can do stuff which you can't do in the Western world. It, which, you know, you did it in the Western world, you have your life taken off. But here yeah, it's acceptable. And it's not the fact that it's acceptable, it's the fact that it will keep you, keep you alive. Oh yeah, it just come out of nowhere. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. It's all, all out, without doubt, be one of the craziest days of riding. End of the Silk Road. It's unbelievable. It's just it makes you sit back and you think, "Wow!" You just try and comprehend what you've just done. It's there's a, there's a different feeling to it. I mean, Yijang's is is full of other tourists, you know, coach tourists, people flying in and all this, and you know, to be able to just get yourself here, Fireland, you know, all the way. You you feel. You feel the whole culture. Yeah, the Terracotta Army, one of the big highlights. It's like going to Paris and seeing the Eiffel Tower, going to China and Yijiang, seeing the Terracotta Army. Of course, they believe in afterlife, so he built this massive army um, to defend him in the afterlife. You know, thousands of these um, army um, statues, and um, then he, you know, kicked the bucket, and he's now ruling the world in the afterlife with. Uh, Big army. We are in um, pit one of the city of about 6,000 clay warriors. As you can see in the distance there. Yeah. Oh, spectacular. It's hard to see, so amazing to see. Absolutely amazing to see. And this is only one pit as well, there's, there's two other pits. Here on a day off in Yijang again, and we're on the uh, old city wall in Yijang, Yijang wall. And um, here we're going to be cycling, cycling around the wall. Great fun. Um, you can hire some cycles. So I'm going to exchange my Triumph engine to uh, my two legs. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. The Where's the engine? Engine? I'm your fit. <laughs> what a pleasant day. Right?
<laughs> Check it out. One, two, three. Ni hao. Ni hao. Hello. I'm falling in love with China, and I've still got another couple of weeks to go, which is fantastic. Silk Road's finished, so now I head south towards Laos and Thailand. Yeah, unbelievable. So bring it on. Southern China. Even he's on the big tower. Ready to rock and roll, baby. Seems quite pleasant this morning. Holy jeez. I mean, people just walking out from the fucking move out of the way. God's sake. Let's just walk out in the middle of the road of the dual carriageway. It's like in London, the M25, people just strolling across the M25. I mean, it's just stupid. Fuck it now. Here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Woo! Able to get into second gear. Fucking hell. Fuck. Fuck. After finally getting out of the crazy city Yijang, my route south will take me through some of the most wild parts of China. Southern China is where I'll spend my 23rd birthday, and also a part of the world where I'll get some of the most toughest riding challenges yet. Hello. 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 And then, just above me is an expressway. Now this is literally on the cliff. Going all the way around, going through. We've just seen practically, I don't know how tall. I mean, you know, 20, 20 stories, probably more. Um, like a roller coaster ride. I mean, apparently China, in the last five years, China has used more concrete than America has in, in decades or something. So of course they've got had to block the road, can't go through. As you can see, they're working away. So you just have to sit back and wait. So we've got another road work. So they won't let the bikes through, they're only letting the trucks through. It's huge construction, the whole day is just doing road work. I don't know if this is going to take 10 hours or bloody 10 minutes. I mean, might have to find a different way. bike is filthy. Look at the state of me. 11 o'clock, over three hours to get 60 miles. I cleaned the bike yesterday, it's filthy. I'm filthy. Thirsty, hot, it's sticky. About three, four days now of continuous just road works. It's amazing to see them work. Just gonna go have a look. Yeehaw! There's ladies working, men working, children working. No health and safety. Very smooth. No Chinese. In in Ingwa. Ingwa. No Chinese. Ni hao. Ni hao. Knock on, I've still got another 200 odd miles to go. It's going to be a bloody long day. The road conditions just got worse, worse, and worse. Weird 
find an obscure things for in there. On a bridge, and what they've done is they're just fixing one side of it, and we're squeezing through. Just in the center of it all now, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty mad. Literally squeezing through. I've already just hit the local guy. <laughs> Smashed up his lights. Um, just gave him a couple of 200 yuan, and he was happy. Whew, that's smoking hot. This is China. This is uh, motorcycling in China at its best. We made it. It wasn't the easiest, but uh, we squeezed through part and then squeezed through another part. It was um, pedestrians, bicycles, everything, you name it. Great fun, motorcycling in China. After finally leaving the big China, my ride into Southeast Asia took me through Laos and then into Thailand, up to the Golden Triangle and then south to the final city of Asia, Bangkok. I'm here in Laos. We've got the beautiful scenery. This is what it's like, it's just green. I just stopped because there's a little village there. That's 23 now it's you can you're coming from China you know you see a lot of small villages in China and all that sort of stuff you know in the western world we live so you know we're thriving for materialistic items and materialistic life when really we've got little kids Hello. Um, something got a really which has really hit me really and it hit me riding through Lao and just thinking back on China these people, they, they live off the land, they live off, they have their own food, they have plenty of water, they have transportation, they have clothes, they have shelter. And the biggest thing that you see is they're happy. They're super happy. The biggest thing in life I've learned is happiness. Driving for something which makes you happy. Don't do stuff which doesn't make you happy. It's not the fact that they're poor, it's just the environment. Environment is they live off the land and they're happy. They're smiling, the kids as you saw, they're running around. And, and you know, it's taught me something which no one would ever learn in a book, reading a book or watching the TV. They wouldn't learn it sitting in an electric room. You know, you got to be here, you got to do it, you got to get out there and see the world. having a ride with all the Thai riders. We have us all the way to, me, all the way to Thailand. So can't speak their language, but it's all a good laugh. The people you meet. Oh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I then got to visit the famous Buddhist temple in the northern tip of Luang Prabang. It is one of the most important Lao monasteries and remains a significant monument to the spirit of religion, royalty, and traditional art. Just across the Thai border behind me, made it from London to Thailand. Brilliant. The last country in the Asia section and then on to Australia. Uh, a week around Thailand and then into Bangkok. Just me, Tigger, and the wilderness. of the Mekong River. Some local locals behind me. We're gonna go sail across, see a bit of Myanmar, go across to the Laos side, go to the local market and then uh, come back to Thailand. We're ready for Bangkok, baby. A whole lot of Thai riders. We've got tourist police, and we are ready to rock and roll. 30 to 40 miles away. Mr. Banana, my man, is here. He's going to lead the way. Here we are 
get uh, the freighting freighting pipe from from Bangkok to Perth. As you can see, the team are from Triumph uh, Thailand Brit Bike, and they're doing a fantastic job. So here we go, Australia. Australia section begins. I can't believe it's here. It's been two and a half weeks of stationery. Finally got a ticket with me and we are now off. Up on fuel and then ready to rock and roll. Looking forward to it. It's going to be quite a change riding in Australia compared to what I've had in Asia and all that. My route across Australia leaves Perth south and then east, across the very long Nullarbor and then north to Ayers Rock and then further east all the way to the east coast of Townsville and then south to Sydney. Welcome to Australia where you have straight roads, the odd bit of water puddle either the sun is shining or there's loads of clouds and if I stay silent for a moment it's fucking nothing <laughs> there's not even animals I've, the only animals I've seen are birds dead kangaroos more birds the odd eagle and shitloads of ants there's nothing coming from China where they stuff 20 million people in one city <laughs> in Australia it's just nothing no China that was <laughs> some gas to win I was expecting Zigger to go kaboom so I head up to Norseman there um, and that's when I start heading east full on long stretch all the way and just the number one and that's all it is it's just going to be pretty much what I've had where it's just nothing six o'clock but I'm gonna push on I'm gonna start losing daylight soon go another 200 miles to that town here in South Australia Woo I wanted to push further on across the very long stretch of the Nullarbor and in order to do that I had to ride at night time Basically three quarters of the Nalibu. Um, I'm now here in the town of Nalibu, the Nalibu uh, Roadhouse. Ended up riding 560 miles. Good God, it was boring. <laughs> it's just Once that sun went down, my fatigue started kicking in instantly. I was like, oh jeez, I've never spent so much money on fuel. I think I've spent over a hundred bucks today just on fuel. Longest day on the saddle, the most times fueled up in one day, the bonus roads and that I've ever ridden as well. This little shed. This little, literally this shed. Um, if I showed the outside, you'd think I'm at the um, beginning of a horror film. Not exactly the most spacious of things, but there's Tigger. Um, as I said, it's, it's proper out back. It's just, it's not even worth it. It's just, oh, oh. It's all part of the adventure. It's all part of the experience. Yes.
walking day, 450 miles in Ayers Rock. Boom! And this thing here, this big, bloody great big rock, is a massive highlight of the trip. To be able to ride London to Bangkok via China, and then, you know, to make it possible to fly the bike over here in Australia. Get here massive highlight. I mean, it's a spectacular winter, spectacular winter's day. Couldn't ask for more really. Me and Tigger. Here's Rob baby. Woo. Give me bends! <laughs> Give me mud! Give me roadworks where I have to dodge things! Give me tuk tuks! <laughs> I'm losing my mind now, so. I've made it to Queensland, Sunshine State, and uh, it's, it's pretty darn sunny. <laughs> Riding in Queensland was sort of the big. Um, you know, it was, it was a state I was looking forward to because I know it's going to be a bit more lively, you know. The, it's a bit more populated, the Queensland on the East Coast. And I'm here now in Townsville. Uh, stunning ocean views. And finally seeing the ocean. It's um, sort of a beautiful sight to see after seeing the desert the whole way. Got some company in as well, which is fantastic. Uh, lovely company. Andre. My daughter Enya, travelling with Greece today. We had a lovely barbecue last night, did a lovely brew up, uh, fantastic hospitality from, from them. So it's, um, we're going to fill up and head down to Mackay, uh, down the coast and then stop at the beach. So it's going to be fantastic. Get out! That was incredible. I've never seen that in my life. The, the black sparrows and the, the smoke was horrendous. The heat as well was tremendous. After leaving the fire, I then got for the first time in Australia, torrential rain. This is never the fun part of motorcycling, let's be honest. It's pissing down, it's freezing, I'm soaked to the point of relief. Luckily the gear is actually quite waterproof. I'll try and sell this one which is waterproof, it's actually waterproof, the only thing is, is this. The neck, the neck um, doesn't ex isn't exactly waterproof. It's typical. I was packing up uh, my tent, looking in the sky, thinking, "Oh, it might, it might rain, it might rain, it might get a bit of rain today. If I can pack up quick enough." Fucking sod's law, pulling out the poles so the tent the tent is flat. 
and everything's open, my bags are open, ready to pack in, I bloody, and just pissed them. The tent just got saturated, and of course it's on the floor, so it's just puddles all over it, the tent's just soaked, my bags are soaked, and then five minutes later, it stops. Absolutely trench rain. Yeah, everything's wet, I'm wet. To be honest, it's never fun when it's raining and you're on a bike. How's my hair looking? Stunning, I bet. <laughs> you gotta laugh at these situations. Gotta find a place for a coffee, warm coffee, I think. My hands are freezing. So. Fuck you! Get in there! The hands wet! <laughs> it's all fucking. Ah! A few days after sightsee in Sydney, as I sea freighted the bike to Christchurch in New Zealand. Should be. Here I am. I'm here at the warehouse in New Zealand, and as you can see. Bike is cleared. Just putting the parts together and the wheel on, and yeah, ready to go. Got Campbell Live here, TV also following me, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna get back to work. Just thought I'd show the bike. So here I am, as you can hear, the rain is, um, the rain is ticking on the roof. New Zealand, here I come, Mount Cook, here I come. Um, it's gonna be, it's a shame, I had beautiful weather all week, um, and that day I leave. It's miserable. Uh, I'm here at First European, uh, ready to depart. Thank you to all the TOMCC club members in Christchurch for putting me up. I will be departing pretty soon, in a couple of minutes, and heading on the road. From there onwards, go Queenstown South, and then from Queenstown up the West Coast, Floxgosia, Westport, Nelson. I'm signing out from Christchurch, one end of Point, ticked off. Amazing. Mount Cook, baby. Mount Cook. Woohoo! And this place is unbelievable. It's not the best of, and clearest of days, but the mountain tops, mountain tops, snow peaks, snow peaks. And then just look at that. I mean, just beside me, there's the green mountain, all these trees and waterfalls. This place is incredible. I mean, talk about Mother Nature. Holy crap. I've never seen anything like this before.
wow! What's so wow about it is, it's just you're here. I mean, I can't believe it. To see such beauty is, is mind blowing. You know, to wake up to this is just, you know, it's, it's speechless really. I mean, it's not just a mountain or a two, it, 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 it's just all around. All around is just beautiful. Beautiful scenery, you know, blue skies, crystal clear blue skies, the backdrop, the snow peak top. Then you've got some greenery on the side, I mean, it's just, and it's, it's so quiet. It's, to me, this beats any man made structure. This is what you call spectacular. David, nice to meet you. Hey, Stuart, nice to meet you. How you doing? And you? How you doing? Well done. So Funny. you're another Ewan McGregor, but a little bit better. <laughs> I'm here at Abchat at Kauraki Bridge in Queenstown, New Zealand. And what better way than to get the culture and bungee jump? So, you first time doing a bungee jump? Yo, yeah, here you go. Let's do this. Let's do this, Alan. Goes all the way out to the edge. Holy jeez. Shuffling out. I'm just going to hold your harness just the here as well. Doing the shimmy. <laughs> In three, two, one, go. Ah! Woo -hoo -hoo! Holy hell, it is so cold. The roads are just iced and snow, and it is just slippery as hell. Never ridden in snow before. <laughs> there we go, the truck's clearing it for me, fantastic. Beautiful. You see the road following the coastal line and beautiful wave oceans. Forest trees, going through the Tasman and into Nelson. This is New Zealand, really. I mean, it's beautiful. I'm just seeing the rooftop of just endless mountain there. Nice, easy day today. Only 130 odd miles, so I'm just sort of cruising along. Picton, New Zealand, South Island, right at the top, ready to catch the ferry to Wellington, North Island. Oh, that's, wow, oh, 
Dave, nice to meet you. Really. Hey, good to meet you, my man. Yeah. Auckland baby, Auckland, final destination point for the New Zealand stage, also my second home with my mum and my sister living here and uh, it's me spending my high school years here in Auckland so you know it's just unbelievable um, where I've gone, where I've gone, where I've been, the places I've seen, the people I've met, um, which has led me back here and I mean the only other times I've arrived in Auckland is via a plane, uh, flying from England. Speechless. Try it! Ticket, she's getting prepped and ready, she's now serviced, she's now getting crated up, and she's going to be heading, getting picked up this afternoon, and being, just going through the process of being put on a boat, and then from there to Los Angeles. It should take about a month to get there to get, go through the processes. Then I fly first week of November. Tig has been refreshed, re-oiled, re-cleaned, and she's ready to rock and roll for the next stage, which is uh, North America, Central America, and South America. Dude, look at that. Here I am at Schumacher Motorcycles coming to collect my motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. I just I just saw the tomorrow I just Elephant seals. Coast Highway number one to San Francisco. Yeah, this is just beautiful. The sun setting. Look at this. This is as far north as I'm going. From here, I then just head south pretty much all the way. So I'm going to go to Vegas. Oh, jeez. I thought I was going to get wet there.
Mexico. Ciao. United States of America. Mexico. It's incredible. I love it. Just the whole way, just the. I feel I'm the only person here. Hello. I almost say this is better than the Grand Canyon. It's green, you got roads, you can ride it, it's just like, oh. Amazing! <laughs> Me and Tigger, 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 Tigger. See the views. Please not that. We're in Guatemala. Guatemala finished, done. What I love most about it is the, the people. Um, the people in Guatemala, they, they really make Guatemala for what it is. I'm here in Honduras. Roads are very interesting. Potholes everywhere, and you name it, they got it. There's mud, there's, the bike's already dirty, like hell. Heading 
sort of San Pedro and then sort of east, uh, meeting up with a good friend Tony. But I got, I'm gonna meet with the Triumph guys there in the capital, so. Um, yeah, Honduras is done. Absolutely amazing. Um, went into the capital. Amazing people. You know, went out for a drink. Had a few drinks at the dealership there, and um, yeah, it was really cool. And Tony did. You know, he went out of his way to help me out, which is really cool. So, thank you, Tony. Um. <laughs> Lost my footing, yeah. Really? From the gap. So I was moving away oh, from, yeah, yeah. from the car and I went and then you went yeah, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. She's gone. That's what, that, it always happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Miguel's helped me out big time. Oh, Got him with me all the way through. Good Anytime you want, man. That's the one. Alright, see you guys later, huh? Yeah. 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 I'm here in Costa Rica. I just got out of the border. It is hot and sticky. I am sweaty. A very long border crossing. About three hours. Lots of fluids lost. I'm in a Coca Cola just, just on this uh, one of the streets. Let's dig it. Thank you again for everything. All the best, eh? <laughs> what happens when you have an idea and it goes horribly wrong? <laughs> I saw this lovely little track and I'm on top of this hill. This is all to get a photo and video. So she's sort of stuck. to like whoo, just like whiz around and then put the panniers back on and get back up the very mood. Stuck. Not 
still in Costa Rica, it just absolutely pissed down unexpectedly um, on this little shelter. In Panama, I've made it. Uh, Stephen Kirk I bet, was riding to the border and then uh, so took his cousin um, there at the border and um, before you know it I see the Scots uh, hear the Scottish uh, accent uh, from a mile away so it's quite easy to pinpoint <laughs> um, I don't have an accent this is how God speaks <laughs> up with um, the Triumph Panama guys today in Santiago and then from there the Panama City took us gonna have some uh, friendly company um, for Christmas, Stephen's going to try and uh, get the ferry as well, which I've booked because I booked the ferry from Panama to Colombia. I have some company, um, so two Triumph Tigers, uh, Panama, Colombia, here we come. Hello. 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 Hello to Triumph Riders. Pablo with me here, turn around. <laughs> and of course, uh, Stephen's still here, he's still taking along. And then uh, we're ready to rock and roll from Panama City. Oh, he's following me, I'm trying to get away. <laughs> I think we're following each other, just going back and forth. <laughs> I think, I think I'm gonna start uh, following him. Yes, yeah. I wanna do this, I wanna do this trip. <laughs> he wants to do it. Moto? Moto. 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 Can't get a bike permit, so to get on this new ferry, you've got to get a permit saying that the vehicle is not stolen. They can only do the process in the morning from 7 to 12. It's 3 o'clock. You've got to come back tomorrow, 7 o'clock in the morning, and do the process. Um, and come back to not the most safe or prettiest of places. And it's, it's hot, it's sticky. I am sweating. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Oh, seriously. Yeah. They go they're called palaceras. Palaceras. You want to Bam, 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 bam. So sure. Panama's good, but there are places that, like in everywhere, you yeah. shouldn't mess with. You shouldn't go, yeah. Hola. Hola, señor. Cinco. Cinco coffee, por favor. Cinco de eva. Cinco, si. Sí. Ah, muy bien. Gracias. Oakley Oakley. An update on the process. Uh, Things are all done now. Uh, we now have to wait till 2 o'clock. So it's 11 o'clock now. Take motorbikes and go across the street. And there's another police building. In that building, it will have our forms. <laughs> it's an adventure. Going back and forth. Dealing with formalities, forms, copies, copies, more copies. And then sitting and waiting, sitting and waiting, sitting and waiting. See, it's not all about motorcycling. It's about patience. Just packing up now. We arrive at eight, do the process, and then leave the bike at four o'clock. Then personal check -in. Well, the ferry will leave at seven o'clock in the evening. It should work out. Yeah. So we're here at the ferry and there's been some delays and we can't get insurance and if we can't get insurance to come here we can't get on the ferry and we're just trying to get on the ferry so we have all day um, but not hopeful. Hello, hello! Oh jeez. Rule number one when you go to quarters, um, make sure every form is correct. It's Oh, it's just pissed me off. My number plate is wrong. Not the greatest of situation. The my number plate is Stephen's number plate. And they can't get the form. Obviously my form is wrong. So we'll go from there. The lady said the policeman's gonna come. Well it's sort of good, so I'm not means I'm putting my faith in some ple Panamanian policeman, which to be honest isn't the best of things. <laughs> Still here on the border, still waiting for me for this police officer to come and um, bring my new form with 
the correct number plate on it. The Panama police screwed my form up to start with, so I gotta put my trust in them uh, that they're gonna turn up. This officer came from Panama City, redid my form, and then headed off from there. Correcto. As you just see in the background, there's the ferry. Paperwork's getting done, insurances is getting done. It's been a long day, a waiting day, but see the ferry arrive. Feel relieved. Really helpful the whole group, especially the guys who can speak the language. Uh, <laughs> and we wait again. Still here. Lost track of time. I think it's about seven o'clock now. So basically left 12 hours ago. Well, not on the boat. Yeah, so first arrived, last to get on. And $500 um, on the whole thing. It's it's a load of bollocks, really. Um, bring the bike, don't bring the bike. Move the bike, don't move the bike. Take the luggage off, don't take the luggage off. Let's scan the bags, let's not scan the bags. And now we have to queue in front of all of this. It, it's ridiculous. We've been here in the morning, gone through all the process, gone through the bullshit, and it's ridiculous. Yes. Bought and passed moto, bought and passed moi. They took something off, did they? Why is that to get in the door? Yeah, it's not going to fit. Well, if you can't guess, where I am, <laughs> I don't know, shit. I'm on the ferry from Panama to Colombia. Little cabin, a little bar from in here. Salud, feliz Navidad. South America, unbelievable. New continent, new adventures, new beginnings. Okay, I'm gonna give you this. See? If you're gonna identify that you have a vehicle. Fantastic, wonderful. Yeah, in Colombia, baby. See you later, my man. South hey. America, we made it. <laughs> We've made it. Feliz Navidad. Salud. Perfecto. Hey. Very close to <laughs> Welcome to Colombia! <laughs> Ever sweated like that before in my entire life. Oh. Sweat. That is sweat. My bodily fluid. I'm dripping. It's like I've jumped in a swimming pool. Oh. That's getting out of Katarina was a nightmare. Holy shit! I hit the guy's car. Metamil Panniers 2, local car drivers, new. A car in China, and I can't hear, I hit his wing mirror off. Fuck's sake! 
Move out of the way, you're stuck on the crossing. Over there. Over there. Move over there. He was asking me like 50 bucks or something. I was like, fuck off. I was like, nah. You can have a little. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I'm like, and then I started building a crowd, and then the police started wondering what it is. And that's when you just like, that's when you need to just pay him whatever and fuck off. Like, like get the hell out of there. I'm just, I'm fine. I'm fucking up. I'm done. Oh, gee. That woke Stephen up. Yeah, I'll sleep until we hit that 6k of ground. Oh, I'm going to my pants as well. Hello, amigo. Looks like uh, you're catching that little thing. This is crazy. Big pothole after big pothole. Stinking hot. 37 degrees. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit warm. In your front room, your central heating on. Your double glazing, your velvet curtains. A wee cup of tea in your hands. Spare of thought for us poor sods out here in the fucking heat. <laughs> Doing all this for your entertainment.
He's a great man. He's a great hair. And jump. Jump. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Let's go. Exit. Total. Gracias. Salud. I'm actually 10 miles from the Ecuadorian border now, Adios, Colombia. Um, they labelized Colombia as this dangerous place, don't go there. What I say to that is bollocks, you know. Come and see it for yourself. They're the friendliest of people, the most beautiful, beautiful people. It, it's overwhelming. And I met an American guy in um, Central America and he was, he was, Ooh, don't, don't go there, don't go there, boy. You'll get shot and killed and raped and all this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it has, it had its bad times 10 years ago. Yeah, it probably still has a little bit of bad, you know, it has its bad areas and its bad people. But so does England, so does America, so does Australia, so does Europe. I mean, geez, it's, you know, Europe's on the brink of bloody, you know, re religion war. I mean, it's like, I mean, here is just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful country. It's fantastic people. So the only danger Colombia has is the danger of staying. Well, there we have it. I'm finally out of Colombia. I almost stayed. <laughs> so I'm here. Hey, bro. What lies ahead, I wonder. The equator. <laughs> if I ever thought that I could be in the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. Morning all. Here in the Magic Bean, having a coffee, just before departure, um, heading off from leaving Quito. Been here for about a week now. Nice refreshment before we hit the road. <laughs> just the cafeteria, it's also the parking lot. Just before we're about to hit more fog and clouds again, we're about. Oh. 3,100 meters. The visibility is a bit better than what it was. It's warm. It's warm. It's kind of warm out yeah. yeah. Which is the main thing. <laughs> and I look better. So That's yeah. right. Let's, let's watch this round. Is he going to get it this time? He's got music in the background. Get. Almost. <laughs> got the shoulder still. Still <laughs> Oh, that's it. Swim, swim. Best stroke, or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. I must say, these water fish are good. They keep you dry. Make my bum look big, right? <laughs> it's, it's not going to rain now that I've put water fish on. Oh, yeah, look, there's the sun. Avocado, beef. Ecuador. And it's 
literally over a river, and it's these sheds. And you go across there, and there's Peru. Uh -huh. We have made it into Peru. Stephen's made it, Perth to Peru. I've made it, kept stinking hot. The water wasn't too bad, friendly guys. First one yet, I think. Best one there. There we go. So, so I made it to Peru, so I may as well go home now. He's done, right. <laughs> I'm by myself now. <laughs> First day in Peru and uh, I've had the straightest roads I've had since oh, America. He's not taking it. You better wash your hands. Be good riding, and then it's going to be some epic tunnels as well. Turn the horn on, and then um, hope nothing's coming the other way with the lights off. It's really, 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 really scary. I don't want to do this. Dying of cold, you know. Bum 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 bum. No one. Absolutely really. Bridge. Nice pigs. And you can see through it. Four thousand and fifty meters and up in the air in altitude. Freezing, freezing cold. I, I can feel the uh, the altitude. The east side of Peru. That's where they've had rain, floods, and mudslides. Yeah. And that's all coming from the east. How's it doing? I'm here, just packing the bike, getting ready to eat Lima. More so. Saying goodbye to girl Steven. Back solo, just me too. Me and my mascot Jeff. Yes, audience. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's fill over. Riding this way on the coast, coming in, overlooking the ocean, that's so cool. Basically the whole road is just flooded. Basically going up to the thing. Disaster! Holy shit! Like sort of like a modern day uh, Latin American country, so we will see. I'm in Chile. Looks the same as Peru. Morning, Lord. Oh, look at what you see out in the desert. The hand of the desert. days from Santiago to try out Chile guys it's when Tigger gets a good service I'm a little worried um, I'm running the rear tire to the complete utter maximum if you just have a look here it's starting to the profile starting to wear oh shit yeah look at that look at that that's literally no more profile left the tire has lasted me over 13,000 miles from Los Angeles to here in Chile and now Peru and Chile these straight lines have just whoop and they've just started to square the tire off completely noise in it of San Diego take us made it Chopped up. Hi. Hi. Well, I'm here on a fantastic evening. Some new ladies. Two hermosa ladies. Cheers up. We'll be heading off from Santiago. I have done a change for the first time of the trip. 36,000 miles. I've been using Continental Conti Trail Attacks. I've changed to the Nobleys Continental TKC80s. I think I gotta go for a split. Oh, oh, that feels weird. I've never been in sort of a live volcanic area. No, Argentina's that way. Here we go. Argentina. I'm in Argentina!
I was riding along thinking, there's something up here, there's something wrong. And why? Because so I got a flat tyre. It has no cuts, no holes, no nothing. I can't see anything. That's just bizarre. I don't know what's wrong with it. There's problems with my fucking phone as well. Oh, everything's breaking. Phone's fucked. I can't see any. I can't see anything wrong with it. It's solid as anything now. So there's no instant leaks. So I made it here in Esquilla. Um, I made it, so I'm here for a couple of nights. I'm going to take the wheel off um, and have a proper look at her, see what see what she's like every night. Morning. Let's see if it's flat or not. It's not flat, does it? There we go. Tire is off. Knobbly by another knobbly, one gap by another one gap. No, so it's not the tyre. It's not the tyre. Spare juice. So that's my spare one. Today, um, back into Chile uh, to hit Caratel Strau, Ruta 7. It's apparently, there's road works, and it's quite bad at the moment. Rain, I have timed the weather perfect. Um, yes, there was raining in the Caratel Strau. Freezing cold, I'm going to get on and get on the road. See ya. I was bloody changing the cat. I was just fixing the camera and I thought, oh, fuck, you know. Swim, have a shower. Yes, baby! 
<laughs> there is a downside to this story. The weather. But if it's wet, it just becomes dangerous and miserable, really, and not a lot of fun. Sort of a road, but it's all mud. Oh, look at it, it's just sticking to me, too. You see a 4x4 four four is towing the car up. I've just been told by two locals that I should choose to turn around. As you can see, it's, um, it's squishy and it's sticky. Look at that, look at that. Um, shit, shit, shit. Couldn't do it. I couldn't go up there. It's just it was sticking to my boot. It was already starting to stick to the front tire. I don't have enough fuel to turn around, so that's the only way. Um, some diggers just turned up to try and clear the road. My fuel lights just come on now, so it's um, the nearest town, sort of the junction where I'm going to be returning. That's I presume that's where the next fuel station is. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise I'm stuck. Yeah, I have some food. I was hoping for some shelter to warm up and dry up, but can't have everything in this world, can you? So, fucking sucks. See, sometimes it's fun. Sometimes you just look at it and think, why the fuck am I doing this? Wet and soaked. Absolutely soaked. Freezing cold. Off. Hola. Hola. Ahora sí está bueno. Bien. Ahora bien. Okay. Bueno. Okay. Gracias. For a bit, and the sun's just uh, hands are soaked, cold. Can't feel them. Oh, wow, what a what a challenging day! Challenging day. We made it. We made it. Beautiful. That's where I rode in those hills somewhere, you know, round, and then came in. And that's what I missed. Those are the views I missed. And look at it. Snow top mountains. Breathtaking, it really is. Get in the bike wash. <laughs> Off to cut a tail straw. Hey, 
¿De dónde viniendo? ¿Inglaterra? ¿Eh? ¿Inglaterra? <risa> Oh man, I'm just exhausted, I really am. I find it calms down. It's just exhausting. Just I'm just I am, I'm just tired. <coughs> you know, seven rough days in the Caratel Strau, roadworks and all this. I'm doing a long day, 440 miles today. Just pushed to El Calafate, it's a big it's a big town uh, where I can sort the bike out I can rest after the rough days in Caratel Stral I've had, of course that mud day took a lot out of me. Of course I'm 11 months in now of the trip as well. Of the, you know, it's a continuous trip, but of course I'm doing it. I'm starting to fatigue, um, I'm starting to wear, um, I'm starting to tire, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. I really am. Gravel's okay, but would have been fine. But it's this wind, I mean like, this is sort of a softer area, it's just so strong. You just you become a sail, and um, so of course is that the wind, the side wind. My side neck muscles are aching like hell from the like the wind. That uh, been struggling in a normal job, eh? <laughs> I struggle out here in the wilderness. Right, I'm gonna push on. <laughs> I'm out of fuel. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> Run out of fuel. This gas station is 14 miles away. So I'm gonna go have a leak, limber up, and start pushing the bike. Fucking hell, I'm gonna push this 14 miles. I'm sure someone will pull over. Hopefully. I ain't gonna just stop. May as well. Just keep going. Oh, 13 miles, look at that. I've pushed a mile. <laughs> Fuck this shit! <laughs> Go mad. What a week it's been. Hola. Yeah. Petra, see, sí. gasolina. Go on. Put in your truck. Yeah. In your truck. <laughs> Is there room? Yeah. Ah, see, sí. I'm getting a tow. This truck guy's, uh, Davy is pulled over. Looks like he's just going to tow me. Tow me 10 miles. <laughs> Um, they've just put me around the corner, I've just got to push the bike a few blocks.
It's hard to sink in. You've come to here to this barrier, there's no more road south. For me, that's the America's done from Los Angeles south, so it's it's mind blowing. It really is. I'm just lost in words. For me, the end of the middle chapter, the the final chapter begins with the capital city record literally right around the corner. So this is it. Goodbye, uh, end of the world in Oshawa, and uh, hello, the final chapter. I'm here in Buenos Aires, um, sort of the finish point of Argentina. Middle chapter complete. There you go, science says it all. All the way to Montevideo, the capital. The start of the final chapter. I'm here. <laughs> City record, the final chapter. It's it's upon me now. And um, tomorrow, just about a couple of miles into the centre city, and go to the government building there, get my photo, and the very first thing, and that's when it starts. And then tomorrow, I go into Buenos Aires, and in Buenos Aires, I go straight to the capital city, the government building, the landmark. It's just that's the big thing, really, is. The end is really close. I'm trying to I'm trying to comprehend where me where me and Tigger have been and how far we've gone. I look at that mileage clock and I just think, God, really? <laughs> Get to Buenos Aires. It's just going to be bam, 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 bam. Things to do, things to see, things to happen, and then I'm on that plane and into Africa. Sí, sí, sí. Ah, muchas gracias. Sí, uno. There you go. Once we're there, Uruguay. The government building. Capital city number one. The final chapter has begun, people. 51 capital cities to go. Bring it on. Zones. You can see behind me the uh, the building. Seems like something's going on. There's police everywhere, so I've sort of parked on the on the edge here, so I don't disturb what's going on. There's TV and all sorts going on. I'm here. Capital city number two has been completed, so I've just filled in my uh, mileage, 359.6 miles today. It was all a bit rushed because I had to um, I had to be told to <laughs> to, to bugger off. So <laughs> so there you go. Um, capital city number two, Buenos Aires, ticked off. I'm just uh, the airport there, just about to do the freighting. Basically, of course, you've got to arrive with no fuel. Why am I stranded here on the bend? Only a few meters away from the airport? Because I've ran out of fuel. <laughs> so it's number two times. <laughs> I'm just going to push the bike over the hill and then should be able to do the crating, but I'm a little bit late because I've ran out of fuel now, so... Here's <laughs> it. Two metal meal panniers, my spare tools, my camping gear. I haven't got my clothes or anything in, but everything's on there. And no, no fuel, of course. 664 kgs. Welcome to 
Reunited with Tigra, the guys that uh, Mike Hopkins, the Triumph motorcycle guys here in Triumph, uh, Cape Town. They did a really good clean, look at that, nice and shiny. So, yeah, so we're finally reunited, me, Jeff, and Tigra. The three Musketeers are ready to go. Here's I'm going to go to the Cape Town train station, do the formalities, do the videos, the photos, and the witness signature. Stay the night here in Cape Town, and then get ready for a 5 a.m. leave tomorrow morning to Briefontein. So we're finally reunited, straight to the landmark, and then tomorrow, Bluefontaine. Cape Town's done, and ready to rock and roll. So that is capital city number three, job done. Well, here we go, 20 past five in the morning. Last evening in Cape Town, I'm off to Bluefontaine. I stayed with the tracing guys from um, Ecotrans. A guy called Asia and it's his company and um, yeah and he, he put me up for the last night and now he's just taking me to the um, taking me to the corner where I'm gonna go off the longest day of the whole trip. Let's do this figure. 660 miles. Fantastic. All the way down. Very much nice traffic light. Take the pearl in one. Pearl in one. Thanks my man. Yeah. Pardon? How are you? Sorry. Oh, sorry, no, that's very well. How are you? Okay. A little bit cold. That's <laughs> a normal routine inspection. Yeah. That's the driving license. I hope I'm not in the camera. That's okay, I'll turn it off. Sure. Yeah. You are originally from? England. England. Good day, Sherpa. Quarter to 11, 300 miles. Got my caffeine to keep me awake. Sure. So, Left at five, five o'clock. It's now ten fifty. Yeah, three hundred miles done. It's nearly halfway. <laughs> Still going to have a three hundred and thirty to go. Good. Yep, a little There we go. Got my signature. Keith, Mr. Keith, um, the city hall of Bluefontaine, the capital of the Free State, uh, one of the three capitals in South Africa. So thank you, South Africa, for having three. <laughs> I'm not lying; it was it wasn't easy doing 600, uh, 628 miles today. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever actually sort of gone, ooh, sort of dozed off. I had a couple of Red Bulls. I think they really helped. So I'm actually quite alive now, I'm quite fresh. I mean, geez, I could keep going. Uh, my ass is feeling a little sore though. <laughs> Near 1,000 Ks in 12 hours, so that's pretty darn good, I think. So, Blue Fontaine, capacity number four, and tomorrow, brand new country. Bring it on. <laughs> Makonyanian Square. <laughs> I'm not too sure what that means. That's all.
Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> An interesting little town. Uh, I'm probably the only white boy here. <laughs> Macaronia Square in Lesotho. There you go, Standard Bank, Lesotho. Capital City, number five. about to um, cross the border into Swaziland. Oh. Yeah, capital city number six. Um, the record's broken, broken the record. So here, from here onwards, it sort of just adds to my tally, really. Capital City number six, job done. Is a better way to do it then? <laughs> Check out this sign, cyclists and pedestrians, beware of lion and elephant, Roaders beware, big game, crossing road, <laughs> this is Africa. Which country is this one? England. England? Yeah. You're from England with the bike? Yeah. Oh. Long way, huh? How, how many days have you traveled? One year. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you off to now? I'm on the same Maputo. Do you know the capital cities? Just Africa. to know all of them? Yeah. Maputo, capital city number seven. That was a way to build a sweat to get in. Um, crazy little town, this is, jeez Louise. Absolutely crazy. It's a dirty town as well, flipping up. Coming from Swaziland, Swaziland was actually quite nice, really beautiful, good roads, nice roads, lovely roads. Um, coming to Mozambique, and it's, it's a bombshell. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> But there you go, capital city, number seven, Maputo, Mozambique. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm doing video. Hello, Say hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> and then it has the whole view of the city. That's it. It's just really cool. Yeah, the date and the time, and then hey, there Therese, we go. All the best. Yes, Lovely thank you. Meeting you. Yeah. That was fantastic. Charmaine, she's actually a consultant here at the uh, at the Union Buildings. Absolutely number eight, Victoria the Union Buildings. I have it. I There we go. 
apartment building of Boswana. It's uh, in Gabron, in Gabs as they call it. And um, yeah, it's the capital city number nine. Hey, hey. There we go, capital city number nine, Gabron, Boswana. There you go, two of the three capital cities in South Africa. On one side, <laughs> Blue Fontaine 209, and then 209 take away that, 1010. Cape Town. Bring it on. The monkey. Monkeys everywhere. Look at them all. I'm right, making my way back to uh, back to Cape Town. Quite picturesque, really. You're seeing sort of like the mountains and the vineyards and all sorts of the wines and that. So, it's, um, yeah, it's beautiful, it's really beautiful. Here in the uh, shipping warehouse, uh, Eco Trans with Adrian here, just going through the whole process, really. Like, I've literally just arrived from Bluefontaine, the 610 20 mile day that is the longest on the trip. So, I'm back to Cape Town. Um, just so, of course, to keep it consecutive with the record and the rules. We're freighting her out straight away. So I've arrived straight away, get her all ready to go, then she'll get boxed up tomorrow and then fly the following day. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start taking off all the handguards, the battery and whatnot, and get packed up. Okay. Bye bye, Tigger. <laughs> Today's big day, I will be reunited with Tigger. Just been confirmed that the bike's now been uh, delivered to the warehouse. It's all sort of, yay, because it's confirmation that she's unpacked, ready to be picked up. Uh, she's all cleared, done. And that is freighting finished. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's the whole part of the fun to try and get one bike doing the whole thing. So, but this is it. This is the last one. It is here. It is. Tigger is three blocks over there, over the other side of the motorway. I pick her up, freighting, done. It is then just Europe, it is ferries and land. Ferries and land, me and the bike never leaving each other until we're back in London in the middle of July. So, yeah, so pretty stoked about that, pretty stoked. Freighting done, Europe, capital cities, the final chapter is here. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah. All the best. Yes, thank you. Hope you make it. Thank you. Happy and blocked. Yes, definitely. <laughs> thank you. See number 11, job done. Back in Spain.
Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Capital City, 13, Monaco. He's putting me out for the night here in Bern. So then what I do is I ride to Bandus today and then ride back. Um, so I have a revisit, a revisit here in Bern, and then ride from Bern to Rome tomorrow. Should be about in the 580 mile day. I'm joining of Bandus Liechtenstein, capital city 15. All right guys, have a good one. Some building, yeah, huh? absolutely amazing. So, there you go, capital city 16, Rome. This is Andy being my uh, witness. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I gotta battle through all the traffic now, so. getting permission to get into Vatican City. So we just got an email now today, this letter. Basically um, sent me this email, blah, 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 but it's in Italian. So just for, while I'm Google translating it, you can get my real reaction of, my, I'm presuming this is the answer. Translate it, because of course it's in Italian. Um, again, dear sir, I regret Great to inform you that your request has not been accepted. It's not been accepted. So the next capital city will then be um, San Marino. quite amazing country really um, it's a very small country and it's literally built Excuse on me, the hill I take a picture with you yeah sure there yeah. you go come on come on <laughs> thank you thank you in the jail in some jail thank you no worries no worries who was I so there you go capital city 17 City 18. I just got told off. <laughs> Myself. There you go. Still has the uh, the original glass and the window. This is 
uh, St. Mark's Church. Get ready for this. The cannon's gonna shoot. Midday cannon. Here we go, here we go, ready? Sorry, Jevo, doesn't yet. I haven't had these types of roads since uh, South America. Capital City 21, National Theatre, Podgorica, here in Montenegro. There you go, got local little kids, say hi. <laughs> so there we go, capital city 22, uh, here in Albania. Not a fantastic choice again of uh, landmarks. City of Scope, or Scope E, Scope Pi. City of Scope, capital number 23. About to go into Greece. Rums Reese. <laughs> Being told off. <laughs> I got no euros. I'm all out of euros. So I got no. I got no money. <laughs> okay, it's uh, one fifty. One fifty. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Capital City 24, Athens, Greece, with Antonas. A lovely digestive drink of honey and raki. Honey and raki, it's quite hot, dirt in a shot glass. Does this have alcohol? Yeah, of course. Too much. <laughs> here in Athens, Greece, Capital 24, Antonas here being the lovely host. <laughs> Salut! Salut! Salut. Very soothing. Delicious. Hello world, wake me up to another good, good morning time to go. If I turn Tigger on, she should come up with some nice figures. Yes! <laughs> 50,000 miles! Look at that! Almost 13 months. 23 years old, one bike, one continuous trip, solo, it's 50,000 miles. Woohoo! <laughs> you live long, aren't you? Yes. I'm Katerina. Katerina. Yes, but I could say just hello. How are yes. you? Very well, how are you? Oh, that's fantastic, thank you. Yeah. It was lovely to meet you. <laughs> Capital City 25 here in Sofia. And hello. hello. I'm about to get I'm about to get told off now. Your country? England. England. You speak English? Yes. Ah. This is national parliament. Yes. Not, not the driver here. No ah. parking. No ah, parking. Yes, yes, yes. Where you go? Um, I'm going to a hostel. I'm here. I just need a, a quick photo. I'm doing a Guinness ah, World Record. Hostel. The name is hostel. Homestay something. It's around the corner. I just need a picture of the motorcycle okay. and the building. But, uh, this is a motor not here. Okay, where can I where can I park to get a picture? Find the building. I'm doing a you, record. You only photo this building and yeah. Then, uh, yeah, yeah, then I'm going. Okay. Yeah. Photo yeah. and yeah, 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 yeah. your yeah. best football club in England. Tottenham. Oh Berbatov! <laughs> many, many years ago, yes. Berbatov! Yes. Very good Berbatov. place! Yes. Berbatov everyone! <laughs> so Capital City 25, Sofia, Bulgaria. We are all the adventure. We are all the Some house for a pilot, huh? There you go. Capital City 26, Bucharest, Romania.
through number 27, Belgrad City. Congratulations. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> this is uh, Peter, Peter Kiss. Yes. Uh, I'm from Budapest and he's here. That's Pretty. the one. <laughs> you stay with me and, and drink a lot of Hungarian good wine. Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> We're going on a little street mobile, a little tour around town. My co pilot. And I'm living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be living free. Living free, living free, and I was meant to be. I'm living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be free. Meant to be free. City 30, Vienna, Austria. Hello, Anita. Uh, taking me out here. We were in a lovely uh, local Austrian, some Austrian restaurant with Stein beers and lovely pork, a lovely environment. Um, it's, it's, it's exactly how I imagine Austria, and I love every moment of it. This is brilliant. So, so of course, to my fantastic hosts. See you guys. Hold up. Capital City 31, Prague and Czech Republic. Capital 32, Berlin, Germany. How you doing, my man? <laughs> here with Robert. Oh yeah. Here in Warsaw, Poland. He's going to be putting me up for a, for a little bit while I get my visa in Belarus. Yeah. I'm in building uh, here in Warsaw. What's that? Say Warsaw. 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 That's correct. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Warsaw. There you go. Warsaw. Capital Warsaw. Uh, capital 33. Treated me to a fantastic evening with proper, uh, proper Eastern Europe vodka, vodka shots. That's lovely, that's lovely at everyone. Well, hey. And it is literally one day. <laughs> For six euro. There we go. So now I can go to Ukraine, and then I have to go tomorrow into Mex. Everything brings Robert. And fingers crossed, you know, you have to finish your trip because you did really good job. <laughs> yeah. Really good job. See you later. Yeah. Now in no man's land. 
the last two countries which are quite, uh, I must just say, not European, uh, Ukraine and Belarus. So there's proper borders, lots of queues and visas and everything else. Got my Belarus visa, that's only valid for one day and that's tomorrow. So <laughs> I'm going into Ukraine hoping that nothing goes wrong. Already an hour and 15 minutes in, so almost there, almost, almost, almost. I'm still here on the border in Ukraine. As you can see, that's the border compound. So the time is now 3:30. About three hours now. There we have it. I'm finally in. <laughs> I arrived at 12:10, and it is now four o'clock. Uh, arrival time will be quarter past ten. So it's taken four hours to get through the border. hours so Kiev Ukraine capital city 34 <laughs> There we go. Minsk, the capital city of Belarus, capital number 35. Lithuania, capital 36, and country 59. Capital city 37, Riga, Latvia. Here in Estonia, country 61. There you go, town hall, Pauline, Estonia, capital 38. Just about to leave the hostel, only going to go about half a mile to the ferry port. We're catching the ferry, which is about two and a half from Tallinn to Helsinki. Of course, it's a border crossing, so it's allowed. It's sort of hop, skip, jump the next couple of days. Uh, today, of course, ferry two and a half hours to Helsinki, and then tomorrow, uh, I've then got another ferry to Stockholm. It's some Italians who have come all the way from Italy, going to Finland on a scooter. Shows you that you can do a trip on practically anything you want. So. <laughs> Only capital cities through Europe. Okay. So. Tomorrow you stay where? Uh, Stockholm. Stockholm. So I go to Stockholm next tomorrow. Next day. And then the next day Oslo. Oh. And then the next day Copenhagen. It's very busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck. Huh? Fantastic. Nice Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Nice Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Helsinki, Finland, capital city, 39. Ready to Stockholm, I made it to the ferry. Met some lovely Kiwis here. On a plate. And down a whole load of other bikers. Uh, next capital city, Stockholm. So 
Savanti from Triumph, Triumph Scandinavia. Yep, that's the one. Yep. Uh, Savanti's putting me up for the evening uh, here in Stockholm. Smashed the record now. I mean, the old record was five. It's now 40. Uh, 11 more to go. So I'm pretty stoked. Parliament House, Capital City number 40, Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, I've been in a very old friend of mine. Went to school with her when I was, you know, small. <laughs> Jola, her name is. So. And she lives literally in the city centre. So Oslo, Norway, capital number 41. Got some local bicycles to sort of see the city as such. Copenhagen, Denmark, capital 42. Good solid 20 minutes now. My water's getting hot. So hot. I'm right, I'm sweating. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I call you in the real world and I thought, oh, this man, it must be terrible. <laughs> I would go down the middle, but I'm too big. 36. Oh, jeez. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good friend Nick. It's really um, great. After a year, man. Yeah, Excellent. It's Excellent. brilliant. Been looking forward to it because of course tomorrow is also my birthday. So what better company to have? Cable 43 country 66. Wow. So there we go. And that's the Royal Palace behind me. This is the main square. That's weird. Smell that weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> You've been here, young man. Hey, there we go. It's evidence. Let's get on it. <laughs> <laughs> so There we well go. Done. Well done, number 44. Number 44, that's the one. Brussels, Berlin. Luxembourg, capital 45, here in Luxembourg City. Good. Made it, we've made it to Paris. It means tomorrow is Cardiff. First capital city in UK. I'm absolutely stoked. Capital 46 in France. The Eiffel Tower, the unofficial landmark. And this is what it was all about. So the Eiffel Tower was the mark of the end of sort of the Europe leg, and now next bit, the last week, the last lap, the last leg, the road to the finish. One week left is the UK. Fingers crossed it all goes well. Don't slip at the last hurdle and yeah, trying to sink all the reality in. So yeah, UK tomorrow, me and Tigger, we're coming back home.
UK. Lovely warm welcome. And of course in Cardiff, Capital City, Capital City 47. No other days I get right yeah. And that's a good I won't even worry anymore. To go my care still to kick them all out the door. Go on a try, come and tell me what you wait for. Was, hello boy. Concert hall. Uh, capital 48, capital 48 and country 69. Philip's going to be my uh, witness. Good. Thank you, Philip. There we go. Scotland, yeah, we have Stuart from Scott Oiler, capital 50, which means I've broken the record 10 times over. About 400 miles tomorrow, I'm gonna leave at 4 a.m. And of course, I've got a special invite to the House of Parliament. This is gonna be the first time I've seen my dad um, since I left. I'm gonna be meeting Lord Digby Jones. It's starting to really sort of sink in. The eyes do start to water now. Um, and I think it's gonna be the first time, uh, first time tears are gonna come out of my eyes. It's a great achievement by any means. 56,400 miles, uh, 71 countries. It's starting to be quite emotional. It's touching to hear all the stories, you know, the people's inspiration I've given, and I only hope I can continue that onto the next journey. The final chapter is officially on its last pages, uh, and officially writing the history book. Hello. Capital City, broken the record 10 times over. More than that, 
and uh, the signature is just about to go on now which will make it capital consecutive capital 51 breaking the old record which was five so making it virtually impossible for anyone else to beat it and there we go Absolutely. there we go There you go. House of Parliament, London, finished. But this wonderful machine that's done this is it's taken a 22-year-old young man. And, you know, this, this guy isn't 32 or 42 or 50. He was 22. And, and he's come back 24. And look what he's done. And I, I, if there was something where you can inspire young people with, it's this story. <laughs> Six thousand eight hundred miles, and uh, I'm done. So I'm home.